Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Crew First Poultry Podcast. My name is Jeremy, and as always, I want to thank you so very much for spending some time with us today. Got another great guest on today. Looking forward to digging into some some good topics, topics about him, and just wherever he goes, as always. But uh, without anything further, got Mr. Mike Bernard here with me today. How you doing, Mike? Good, sir. I'm uh, just absolutely pumped to be here, and I'm, I'm humbled that you would uh, ask me to do this. I, I listen to the podcast, big fan. So I'm, I'm a little bit of a fanboy. Haven't listened to the most recent one, but I'll tell you what, that one with the slow house with John Ford was awesome. It speaks right to my heart, man. I bet. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. But yes, he, he definitely has a good message that a lot of people like us need to hear, you know, the, the smaller people that, that need to understand that there's still people waiting or uh, counting on us. So it was definitely a good, he's a good dude. So tell us, Give us a little, uh, give us a little bio on yourself, and and we'll kind of start digging in from there. So, uh, I am a uh, rescue captain on a fire department in northern Wisconsin. So, if you can imagine what you think northern Wisconsin is for some people who come here, we're <laughs> further north. So, like, I am just south of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So, I'm about as far north as you can get. Uh, so we are super rural. Um, we actually live in a community that's extremely tourist-based. So uh, my department, we cover about 76 square miles with one station. We're actually constructing a second station right now on the north end of our district. Uh, my county has the most lakes in the entire state of Wisconsin. So water's never a problem. Hydrants are a different story, but uh, water's never a problem because we've got lakes. Um, we are running uh, a smaller amount of calls. We're not a huge department. So a few hundred calls a year, just based on, you know, like 10, 15, 20 working fires, depending on how busy the year is in our standard medicals. Um, we see a lot yep. of uh, volunteering in our area. Um, our uh, overall career departments in the state of Wisconsin uh, is far outweighed by your volunteers and your paid on calls. Uh, so, you know, for us, we, put a large emphasis at my department on uh, training. Uh, we're meeting constantly throughout the month, which is awesome. We uh, get a lot of buy-in from our members and we have uh, you know, uh, a really high uh, level of expectation as a command staff uh, from our, our training from our members. And uh, you know, for us, we're getting out of summer already. I mean, right now, I, I, I'm sitting outside and everybody's gonna think I'm nuts, but it's like 45 degrees right now and it's just perfect, so. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's terrible <laughs> oh man the colder the better bring it on this heat has been killing us man so you know we're, we're already dipping into fall and uh you know for us we're gonna experience some uh new and unique challenges this year as we have to constantly evolve you know first day of school here uh kids are back in school but you know what we're starting to see a massive increase in our year-round population now for us area wise uh we have a overall area of about you know 10 to 20,000 as we combine some of the townships for my little town we've got about 4,000 people that are going to be here year round but since we are a getaway for people from like Chicago, Minneapolis, uh, lower Michigan, uh, tons of other states on any given weekend during the summer our multiplier for our population to that 10 or 20,000 can be a factor of 10 to 12 so we can uh -huh. actually have a population of uh, upwards of 120,000, like on our 4th of July weekends and whatnot. So we have a very unique challenge that we have such an amazing population density with the area that we have and the challenges that we face because we don't have a ton of really career departments or even paid on calls uh, in our area. So yeah. um, we have to do what we can with what we have and, uh, you know, it, it can be challenging, but, you know, when you get good buy-in from everybody and uh, you really put that emphasis back on training, you know, we, we, we take uh, a lot of pride in uh, um, what we do and, you know, looking at our times out the door and, and the, what we're able to do to the, for the community. Um, so, you know, that's a little bit kind of with our area. Um, we're excited to have a second station in because we'll be able to be more effective on the north end of our district. And uh, for us, it's all about the mutual aid si uh, side of things. Um, we dump in, we're centrally located for our county on the more of the south central side. So we dump into uh, a northern part of uh, the county below us. 
So we like to uh, go to a lot of uh, fires. Uh, we get called a lot because we do train a lot. And uh, when we get off the truck, we're ready to work. So tools in hand, ready to go to work no matter what. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of fun because it's nice seeing the guys so excited about it. But it's not always been that way. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about some of that stuff here. But, you know, that's a little blurb about me and, and kind of where I am. And, you know, it's, it's God's country up here, in my opinion. But some of y'all don't think that 40 <laughs> yeah. degrees is perfect. Just wait. Just think it'll be another 80. <laughs> It'll be another 80 degrees colder in like oh January. So <laughs> I can't, I can't do that. No, I, I'm the type of person that literally you won't hear me griping if it's 105. You know, I, it's not comfortable to me, but I will not gripe because I would, I know that when it gets down to around 55, 60, I'm, I'm starting to gripe. That it's getting too cold. So Brother, I'm, I'm a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I am dead on the pavement somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to find me and um, it's going to be over because, man, I can't. We get some of those heat spikes. I remember we did a, a, a live fire down in uh, the southern part of the state with Brothers in Battle. Uh -huh. And the heat index was like 110 or 115. So you'd come out and it'd be like, wow, there's no difference. It feels like I'm still on fire because yeah. <laughs> and, and I just I can't imagine how you guys do that constantly throughout the year. Like, give me 40 below every day because otherwise, worst case yeah. scenario, I can I can torch stuff off. And if I get cold, I can just replace my gloves. I can put on a different hood. I mean, it's pretty easy. It's just layering. But yeah, the, yeah. the hot, like you can't take your skin off. I mean, it, <laughs> it's just so hot. So, and that's how it's been here for the last couple months. It's been in the 80s and 90s. And we just, we don't operate well with that heat. Hey, my, my wife is uh, from Minnesota. And it's, it's just funny listening to, you know, that side of the family talk about exactly what you just said, the, the 80 to 90 being just intolerable. And you're like, what? <laughs> it's just, you know, you, it's interesting. You, you talk to different people across the nation and there's so such a broad spectrum of, of comfort levels as far as weather. It's funny. Absolutely. How many, how many do you got one station? How many uh, personnel do you run per day there? Uh, so our department is 100% volunteer. Uh, we're not even paid on call. So okay, we are a uh, total membership. Okay. I think we're up to about 46, um, which is awesome because okay. for us, uh, we actually have a problem with membership because we have so many people coming to us. We actually continue to add to our roster to the fact that we have to continually go back to the town and talk about, well, we might have to bump up to 60. We might have to continue to keep pushing that up because, you know, we have a really strong junior program. Um, we get in the state of Wisconsin, we uh, start some of our junior members off at uh, 14, 15 years old, and they get a mentor on the fire department. And uh, our goal is to try and carry them through till they turn 18 so that we can provide them with a, a career in the fire service. Um, it's, it's pretty cool because, you know, we've got probably three or four junior members right now and they get a mentor and they're able to come and train and do limited things on calls but then they get all their schooling paid for and uh, some of them who do stay in the area and get jobs around here they're valued assets because they're young they're excited great work yeah. for you know interior guys um, but you know as far as us you know our big value is that our membership knows that they're there for the job they're not there to make money they're not there to you know, get the sweet pager and t-shirt because at the end of the day, we're not getting anything as a kickback. So, you know, when we have, yep. you know, our whole membership showing up to trainings, when we have our whole membership invested in, you know, doing stuff at the department and going out in the community and doing fundraisers and things like that, it's awesome to see because I think honestly with volunteers, we have the opposite problem where with some of the volunteers where it's just like, ah, you know, whatever is just here because we're just volunteers. Like that's not the right mentality because if you don't hold people accountable to anything, like expect mediocrity. Well, I don't understand how people don't know that that's the expectation going in because if you're not holding anybody to accountable, any a type of accountability, how are they yeah. going to come to stuff? Like, why would they come to training? Why would they see the value in it? Why would they not, you know, go past the minimum? And for us with like uh, the way that we've written our SOPs is that, you know, if you're not showing up to meetings, if you're not showing up to trainings, if you're not showing up to calls, I'm sorry, there's somebody else looking for a spot. 
and you just don't have any value here because if you're not going to come to stuff, what's the point of you doing anything? Yeah. So, you know, we hold our people to a super high standard and we see growth within our numbers. So, you know, finding that, that good uh, uh, equation that's going to keep your people, keep training realistic, especially with fire ground operations and, and kind of keeping it fun for people. Um, that's, that's what we found and it's working really well. And, you know, it's to a point we're adding our second station on and we're adding more members and, you know, we're, we're still running calls and, you know, for us, we're, we're holding people accountable to how fast we're getting trucks out the door, how fast yeah. we're getting on scene, how we're deploying our late, I mean, how we're deploying our lays, how we're doing stuff, you know, adding things like VES ladders, adding, you know, different type of packaging options and just constantly driving to be better. And, you know, that's a uh, uh, big kudos to my chief because, you know, my chief's younger and, you know, he's hungry. He likes to go to classes. He likes to get dirty. And, you know, it's, I, I haven't said that, you know, I'm not going to say that I've always agreed with them and we've always seen eye to eye. Um, but, you know, we're, we're at a good point with where we're actually seeing some good positive growth with that. And, uh, you know, it, it's like I said, if, if people can take, you know, a little couple of notes from that, and maybe take it back to their own department. That's where you got to start looking at is holding people accountable, because I just don't think as a fire service, we're doing a good enough job. And I just don't think, honestly, people know where to start. And it's a culture shock. And I'm sorry, but if you're going to lose people because it's like, well, I don't want to go to class. Well, I don't want to go to training. Well, I don't want to do this. So what the hell are you doing here? I mean, yeah. really, like, what? you know, we have to train constantly. And for us, we're, we're doing something weekly, which is great because whether we're doing meetings, command staff meetings, different types of IC trainings, fire trainings, EMS trainings, rescue trainings, we're constantly doing something and having the people excited about it and understand that that buy-in is there and, and this is the job and we have to be ready no matter what. You know, I, I feel almost offended sometimes when you hear from the volunteer side of things, it's like, well, you're foundation savers. Oh, you've never lost a basement. Like I take extreme prejudice to that because yeah. like w when I get on scene and I have my crew and we're stepping off, we're, we're going interior. Like, yeah. It, we get told by a lot of departments around us that we're too aggressive and boy, God, that, that warms my heart because <laughs> I know, I know that means I'm doing my job. If that yeah. means that we're making rooms and we're doing searches and we're putting the fire out from the inside out, or we're making the roof and we're cutting the roof with already being behind the eight ball with our response. Huh, beautiful. Awesome. That's great. Because guess what? We're doing the best <laughs> thing that we can for our taxpayers. Yeah. Yeah, that's real that's a real big cut down right there. You're you really, really hurt me with that. <laughs> <laughs> the uh that man, what what you just talked about right there is uh it's just just the term accountability and the volunteer service. Man, that's hard. And that and this is really nothing that I was even planning on talking about. I think you could turn this into an entire shoot podcast or series of podcasts but you know having somebody that is there on their own time that could be spending time with their family or doing any number of any other things but they're spending it there at the volunteer department and putting some type of accountability on them in addition to that man that's that's a hard it's a hard thing to push and you know just going speaking for myself and I'll I'll be I'll be a little brutally honest on telling myself right now you know I'm I've been on our, my little volunteer department here where I live for, oh, I don't know, probably four or five months. And that's in addition to being a career firefighter as well. And right now I'm just, I'm really struggling because I feel so bad because I don't have a lot of time for them. And, you know, I, I'm already gone a third of, of my life. I'm gone a third of my kid's life, a third of my wife's life with my job. And so when I get home, you know, I, I, I want to go to sports games that my kids having. I want to spend some time with my wife and my kids and all that. And so it's very hard for me to say, hey, I know that I've been gone for 24 hours, but, you know, we, we have to go check the truck out at, at the station. You know, you know what I mean? Yep. And so I, I feel bad because I am definitely not holding up my end of being a volunteer with my department and, and I do have a lot of uh you know a lot of things that like I said I just feel bad for that 
but it's it's hard man it's it's hard to just give that time when it could be given somewhere else well and you know it's it's funny you bring that up and that's the one thing like I try to talk about with, you know, a lot of the guys is, you know, when they come in and, you know, you don't start seeing a guy, it's just the communication. Like, Hey man, you know, God forbid, God forbid we, we do check-ins with each other. God forbid we put our egos aside and, you know, this whole uh, type A personality crap, God forbid we put it aside and just actually care about you. Be like, Hey man, how's it like, what's going on with your yeah. life? You know, I, I noticed you haven't been at trainings. I noticed you haven't been at me. Like, how's everything going? Have you just been busy? Like, uh, you know, that's one thing in our department, all we ask is communication. Like, yeah. if you're going to communicate effectively with us and just be like, hey, man, I, under I understand what you're going on. I understand you going to kids stuff and doing that and putting good value back into that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, when we are talking about like faith, family, fire or anything like that, that's that hierarchy. And I'll be honest, I'm not a saint. Now, she's not here to yell at me, <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, she would be sitting in the background just going, mm-hmm, because uh, I – when when the pager hits <laughs> when there's trainings to be had when i'm on the road i am gone a ton like most of the people who meet me are just like you know yeah we, how do you guys do shifts and stuff i'm like you know I, i'm a volunteer and people are blown away by that because like they they see me out i i have a huge value in training and i i am a student of the craft you know as far as teaching yeah. goes and everything the only way that I stay good is, is I expect a lot out of myself. And when I, I I'll be honest, like when I started out in this, I, you know, I've been in the fire service now for 10 years. I, I was a YouTube firefighter. Like I would sit and I would see these guys and I, I would be watching these videos and be like, God, like, that's amazing. Like, how are they doing that? And, and I, cause I never had that around here. And like, we didn't have that type of culture. And then I started like figuring out that, oh my God, there's conferences. Like there's stuff outside of my little technical college bubble here in <laughs> Northern Wisconsin. And I started branching out and I started meeting that guys. And like, before we went live, like we're talking, like this is the biggest thing because like I get to meet other people now that are just like me that like are going through the same problems and are, are dealing with the same things or like have some of the same complaints. And like, yeah. that's where I just started to grow because yeah. that just, that, that sparked that fire deep inside me, just like loading up the needle of motivation, man. And it's going straight into the heart, like Pulp Fiction, like jam that in there and just drain it because I am, I, I, I'm filled with it. And like, I get pumped up about this stuff and guys around here think I'm a little crazy because of all that I do and how much I go to. And, and I'll give you that, but like, that's the one big thing is I don't, I try to make as much as I can and I'm super busy, but you know, at the end of the day, when you, when you look at that, it's just that communication factor. And you know, if guys know what you're going through and, and honestly, if they're your true brothers and sisters, like they get it and you know, they can pick up the slack and it's a lot easier for me to hear that coming from somebody and just being like, man, I'm going through some stuff. Like I want you at a hundred percent. You know, no matter where we're at outside of the fire department, when we cross that threshold, like I got to have you here a hundred percent. We got to be on the same page. We got to make sure that we're talking effectively and working effectively with each other, because especially in my scenario, like, yeah, we can do a lot of fire department training. We can do small group trainings with your officer or your, you know, your uh, command officers and, or your line officers that you're assigned to. But like, I don't know who's going to be riding in the engine with me that day. I don't know who's coming with me on a pin job. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I don't know where you're gonna, your head's going to be at. So that open communication and making sure that we're all effectively working together is just going to make that cohesive unit that is going to be more effective on the fire ground. And in, it is tough, like you said. But again, what are we talking about? We're talking about culture. We're talking about w where you're leading from and what you're fostering. And, and like I said, I, it's not easy. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, you know, anybody listening to this podcast, if you think I'm nuts, I mean, Go start holding people accountable to it. And it's going to take a while. I mean, but think about it. We've got hundreds of years of fire service tradition, culture, and everything that we've been just a, a blip on the radar with. Like 10 years with what I've seen in my department, it's taken me 10 years to do stuff. But it's only been yeah. 10 years, not hundreds of years. Yeah. What can I do with the next 10? I mean, yeah. it, it's unbelievable to think about like where I am now. I mean, and and boy, I wish I could go back in time and tell myself how to do stuff. And, you know, that's kind of where my class kind of sparked from with how I started doing some of my uh, different lectures is that I just wish I could change how I went about some things or how I talked with people because 
I'll be honest, I'm a little bit in your face sometimes because I get really, really passionate about like, this is the way that it needs to be done because I get to travel so much. And for me, it's really hard to kind of take that step back and fully understand that, you know, other guys and gals are in a different place mentally, or maybe they don't just have that level of training or that same mindset. And it takes time to foster that. But you know what, if it takes a little bit of time and I yeah. got to talk a little bit nicer and put my PC voice on, then that's what I got to do. Because if it's going to mean change for the department, boy, that that's longer lasting than I'm going to be. If the department's going to do that for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. And so I, I think that's a good segue to kind of get going on some other things is so first time that I have, First time I remember really hearing or seeing of you is with the online, the, what was it, basically a quarantine firefighter online conference. And yep. you gave a, gave a class or a speech or whatever you want to call it in that. And so I know that's kind of something you're working on and, and, and kind of evolving as, as, as you go, but go ahead and kind of give, give a little insight on that, whatever you want to, and talk about that. So, a little bit. you know, and it's funny because like, the big thing for me is like what spawned this class is that I I was mad. Like I, I sat down and I was like, ah, ah, boy, I, I can't even remember what I was mad about, but like something wasn't going my way at the department or, you know, I was having a conflict with like personalities and things like that. And I'm like, God, I just can't understand why they don't understand me and like get, get where I'm coming from or like they won't listen to this. And I, I know this is the right way to do it. And like, I, I just, I can't figure it out. So I sat down and I was like, how can I channel my energy and like what I'm feeling right now into something positive? Like, how can I turn this around? So literally I sat down and I just grabbed uh, a piece of paper and a pen and I just started writing. And what I started writing was like just ideas and like, I know there's other people out there like me and I know there's other people who are going through this struggle. How can I help? And that's what uh, turned, uh, you know, my class uh, in, in glorious bastards, I called it. And uh, I call it the shameful delinquents because I've gone through a lot of years of like being made to feel bad or alienated. Yeah. And, you know, whether it was, you know, me buying my personal tools or having a certain style of gear or certain techniques, things that I had learned in class, like a lot of people didn't want to learn that stuff from me. And I understand that there was like a personality conflict. I get that now. I didn't understand it at the time. But, you know, now that I understand that, like, I can look back and think like, how could I have done that differently? But, you know, I, I know there's people out there right now who aren't being thanked for going to these classes, who aren't being brought in and being allowed to teach their departments. And, you know, my thing is like, just talking to you this morning, like, dude, I'm a ball of energy. Like, anything fire service related, like I'm eating it up. I, I just give me more, give me more. And, you know, that's kind of where like my energy wasn't being channeled in a positive direction because it was just be like, you know, just fall in line, just do the same thing, just whatever. Yep. This is the way we've always done it. And, you know, that's for everybody anywhere. I mean, this is just the way that it is. And if you, if you don't have these problems, congratulations, because you're probably yeah. working on a great department. Like that, that, that's awesome. Sign me up and tell me where I need to move. But, you know, there, there along the lines are, if you're not that firefighter, you may have to eventually deal with one of those firefighters. And that's where I started talking about, you know, just this class and like these ideas on, you know, my personal last 10 years, it's a look in the mirror at where I started and where I am now and how you can take and funnel it knowing and having that self-recognition that you are that firefighter or that you're a line officer or a senior guy or a chief and you can see that in a firefighter and try to channel it in a positive way and you know i really truly embraced like the rogue speeches and you know that that fully involved thing because god i probably sat in mark's class i don't know four or five times like I just, I, I ate it up because I was just like, everything that he's saying is me talking about poor leadership, talking about positive yeah. leadership. And that's where I started f figuring out that these other guys in the world existed when I didn't even know who they were. And I started figuring out who they were. And I started going to conferences and I just sat in the back of the room and I started listening to how these guys trained and what they talked about 
and, and what they were pushing. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And then all of a sudden I get back to my home and all of a sudden, like all that motivation, everything, my candle would start to slowly flicker out because it'd be like, yeah. I, I'm ready to go. I want to share this. Have me, have me show you how to do ladders. Have me show you how to do a, a minute man. Have me show you how to do this. And yep. it wouldn't be that, and it wouldn't be that, and it wouldn't be that. And like, I would just sit here and, and you get depressed about it. And like, you get on yourself and it's like, well, maybe it is me, but it's not. Because when you start looking at it, it's like, why are you apologizing for yourself when you're that passionate about it and you only want to be better? Because if you're better, you're better for your crew. If your crews are better, they're they're better for the citizens. Yep. And it's that positive positivity in that circle where, we just kind of keep going around and around and, it, and it's good for everybody. So, you know, my big thing is like, don't apologize for who you are and what you do, but there is a fine line. And this is kind of where I went down a different path because there's insubordination and there's passion. And that's really hard for some yeah. of us to kind of separate that because you know, when you look at the passionate firefighters, they're doing everything they can. And some of them just don't know how to talk to people. So they're more of the in your face kind of guy. And this is how it needs to be. And no matter what, like, that's where I started really alienating myself from the group. And I, that's again, where I grabbed onto the whole black sheep and rogue thing, because I was pushing myself along and I was increasing my skill set. I was doing stuff on my own. I started videoing myself, you know, because for my personal progress, like I could sit back and watch my videos and be like, oh, my hand isn't in the right spot on the ladder. Yep. Oh, my mask up, you know, I, I missed the tab on this one. So like I was really, really growing. But then I, all of a sudden that epiphany hit me and it's like, but I'm doing it alone. And if I'm alone on the fire ground, that's not positive because like, where's the crew? Where's the rest of my team, if you will? And if I can't grow with my team and my team can't grow with me, like I'm not doing anything positive. And that's where I needed to kind of figure out the hard way through some insubordination, if you will, and a couple of little uh, speed bumps, we'll call them. Um, but, you know, having that throughout my career has taught me that if you can just back her down from like a 10 to even like a seven or an eight and still stay true to yourself and still stay true to what your mission is and how you're trying to change things, but you're backing it down because you can talk more effectively to people. Um, you, you can, you can uh, spread your message more effectively. It's all going to work in a positive way. The one thing that, you know, I started looking at is that um, it's not okay for anybody to belittle somebody or be a prick to a guy or a girl that is just passionate because like you're not as passionate as me but maybe you have rank on me, maybe you have time on me. So here's my thumb and I'm gonna smash you and I'm just gonna push you away and I'm just gonna push you to the side just because I don't wanna look bad or just because I don't truly understand where you're coming from or like what you're doing. So you know, maybe I'll just keep pushing you to the side. And honestly, like my big thing with that is like, there's no tradition in being that guy. Like if that's the type of the tradition in your department, I don't want anything to do with it because yeah. if you're fostering that type of culture, it's not positive. Like it's, it's not accomplishing anything. The, the whole hazing, the proby type of thing. Sure. Go clean toilets, go do this, go roll around in the mud. Yeah. That's all fine and dandy, whatever. Everybody kind of went through it. But at the end of the day, like belittling somebody that's passionate, got, you could have a guy who's been on one or two years. That's got more knowledge base in, anything or one specific subject than a guy who's got 20 years on why wouldn't you empower oh, yeah. them maybe maybe yeah. they're gonna show you something that you've never seen before to make your life easier or help affect you know a rescuer or a grab or something like that and that's where at the end of the day it takes a bigger person to do that to take that person under your wings and help foster that growth because they understand that these people are the problem but they aren't the problem and by being a part of the problem is because it's that energy that we talked about. It's misguided. They don't understand how to channel it in the right directions because maybe they're young on the department and they just, it's something that's brand new to them. And they're just so excited because don't we always talk about that? This is the greatest job in the world. I, I, I don't know of anything better. Like I wake up and I breathe, like I'm on Facebook, like reading quotes or just watching videos. Like, how can I improve this? How can I be better? This is the best job that we could ever have. And yeah. 
they're excited about it. So don't stifle that because if you kill the flame at the beginning, guess where they're going to go? They're going to go sit in the recliner and they're going to shut up and they're not going to do anything. And they're eventually going to be that person 20 years down the line and they're going to do the same thing to that next person. So, you know, by being part of the problem, they also aren't the problem because if you can guide them and take them under your wing, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's people who fear what they don't understand. So they push them down. It takes that bigger person to take them under their wings and really guide them in the right direction. Now, you know, you're not going to do that with everybody. And there are going to be people out there that no matter what you say to them, they're going to be anti you, whatever. But you know what? Everybody's got haters. And at the end of the day, if you can smile at those guys and continue your skill set and continue the push, that that's at, you know, that's in my opinion, uh, uh, the bigger person to do that and a better thing because you're going to continue to improve. And eventually, hopefully, you break down that wall by continuing to bleed that enthusiasm and get that group around everybody to bleed that enthusiasm back into that person. And, you know, one of the things that I, I, I look yeah. at with it is I, I talk about like everybody's got daddy problems on the fire department. And when I say that, you know, daddy problems is uh, manifesting distrust in our leaders because of our unhealthy relationships. And that I think is the biggest definition with this class, because when we start talking about these rogues and these black sheeps, they don't have that positive father figure that's really brought them under their wing. So when we look at that culture that's being established there, their, their dads, if you will, are absent, abusive, and controlling. Because when we talk about poor leadership, aren't, aren't the, isn't that defining a poor leader? They're going to belittle them. They're going to abuse their power to kind of put their thumb on them and push them aside. And they're going to be controlling in that aspect because that leader might know that, hey, you know, I know that Mike can go throw that ladder and do that on his own, but, you know, I don't like the way he does it. So I'm going to have Joe go do it. And Mike, you go over there and you do something else. Um, so, uh, you know, those overly assertive leaders and those ones that want to control the people that don't fall in line truly is because, you know, they don't understand that person and having that ability to take that step back. And again, talk about what this class can do for those people and, and develop some of these life hacks to start dealing with those people more effectively and, or the recognition in yourself as that firefighter, we have to find a middle ground. It's like politics. Like instead of taking that wedge and continuing to push that wedge and divide people, our goal is to come back together and unify because we're here to do the same job. And yeah. yeah, we have different tactics. Yeah, we have different philosophies on things. But man, if we can take our basic skill set and we can take our basic tactics and basic philosophies and we can mash those together into a hybrid that makes it work for everybody, like that's how everybody's going to grow more effectively. Um, you, you know, it, you have those people that sit in the back of the room and they're always talking trash because at the end of the day, there's just a lot of people you hate us because you ain't us. I mean, that, that yeah. you're, if you're, if you're lazy, if you, you know, are jealous that, you know, jealousy is a big one. And again, ego is another thing. That's just a killer, man. Like if you can't leave your ego at the door and be an open mind and learn something from any of everybody, I mean, that you're just not showing that true passion and motivation for what you're doing. Um, so, you know, I, I think that, you know, a lot of this is a two-sided coin with everything and uh, we, we have to work together with it. Um, and just understand everybody more effectively, because if we can't do that, we're not going to be moving forward in any type of positive way. Yeah. I think something that I kind of found interesting when you were kind of going through that is what you're talking about kind of guiding those that are passionate towards. And what came to my mind is you're basically channeling that passion, that drive towards a positive direction. You know, with that, that is a, that is a challenge of being an officer is, is you have you know, however many people you will have underneath you, you're going to have that many different personalities, different drives, different levels of passion. And you have to figure out how to channel whatever level those are in a positive direction, because you only, not only have to deal with the different levels, but you only, you also have with all people learn or, or what speaks to somebody because something speaks to him differently than it speaks to her. So you got it, man. It's, it's like a giant 
I don't know, some type of huge puzzle you just got to continuously fix and manipulate and just trying to work this piece to work this piece. And but, but that I, I think that sums it up really well. You're channeling those good aspects, aggression, passion, whatever it is, towards directions. And that I think that's a, a great kind of a great thing for you to talk about for sure. Well, and you know, that's, I think that's 100% accurate because, you know, when you talk about people being these puzzle pieces that you constantly have to move around, you're 100% accurate because, you know, when I start looking at, you know, the fellow bastards, if you will, like, I'm a ball of energy, but by design, because of my daddy issues, I'm an introvert. Like, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be in a corner because what have I been told my whole career? Shut up and go over there shut up and just go do it the way that we've always done it. Yeah. Just go sit down, just be quiet. So like, you know, I'm kind of that abused dog in the corner where it's like, I'm, I'm just filled with energy and I'm ready to go and ready to do whatever. But you know, God, at the end of the day, I don't want to speak up. God, I don't. And you know, it takes that officer to recognize that and just have to slowly, you know, build that bridge back to positivity. And again, if you're, if you're that guy, it, it sucks, man. Like I, I tell you what, I, I have been, I get so depressed sometimes with it because like the one thing that I think is the most defeating for me is that when I see something being the way that it's done, whether it's at my department or at a different department, or I talk to guys who are reaching out, like I know that it could change and I know what it's going to take to change. But like my whole philosophy, man, is like, why do it in five years when we could do it right now? Like we could do it right now and we could be so much better for doing it. And it's really hard for me to articulate that sometimes because I'm so passionate about it. It's hard for me not to just be like, well, you're an idiot, you know, cause this is the best way to do it. Cause don't you, don't you read the UL studies? Don't you read this? Why aren't you doing this? But you can't say that to everybody. I, you know, in yep. so many words, I've done that throughout my career. And I, I, again, that I would like to call those my quote unquote speed bumps. Um, whether you like to use the word suspensions or not is another thing, but <laughs> But, but, you know, I didn't get to the point that I, I, I'm at today by, by being quiet and holding it, in, holding it in. And that's where, you know, for me, I've built a really positive bridge with our leadership. And I've been able to look at myself in the mirror and say, how can I do better? And yeah. it, to their credit, I, I, I have my leadership, look, you know, look at me and say, how can we do better with him too? Because understanding that the person's an asset and not an anchor is a huge thing and just trying to give them something to do, whether it's helping with training, whether it's helping with policies, whether it's specking out certain pieces of equipment that they're really passionate about. God, you give them, you give them just a little bit, just, just an inch, man, man, they'll, they're good for another year. They're good for another yeah. six months. That's, that's what we do with conferences, isn't it? Man, you look at all the guys that just went to water on the fire. That's all I see on Facebook is like, man, I, this is what I needed. <laughs> I, I, you know, yeah. God, I listened into so-and-so or seeing so-and-so or training on this. Like, that's what I needed. That's what I needed to keep pushing. And I think that's important because like doing these, you know, check-ins and, and you see on Facebook, like that's part of the check-in. Like, Hey man, how you doing? I haven't seen you. You're like, man, it's good to talk to good people. Man, it's good to feel empowered. Man, it's good to have someone tell you good job. And yeah. it, again, just having that passionate person, like you said, just recognizing it and channeling it in that positive direction. It may seem simple, but for a lot of people, it's not. And I talk to a lot of people all over with teaching and stuff. Yet there's a lot of people who experience the same thing and they just don't know how to tackle it. And a lot of people just don't know how to deal with those people. So, you know, yeah. I, I'm hoping with what I have and, you know, starting to talk a little bit more and kind of turn this into more of a workshop type of thing where we have some Q&A and, you know, people learning a little bit more. I, I hope if it makes the difference for one person, if it makes the difference for one officer and I make that life easier for them and know that that person can be part of positive progress at a department and it makes a difference on the fire ground, my job is done. My job's done. I don't need to change the world. If I do it for one person, oh, I I'm set, man. That that's awesome. That's, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think it was the, uh, the conversation I had with Sean Duffy and just basically the same thing was brought up is it is truly amazing to me that there are so many people out there that have similar stories to mine. And you, you addressed the exact same thing earlier is that's where I started my 
journey is to me to this seat right now is frustration, anger, you know, all those things brought me to the place of I better find a good outlet for this or else it's going to put me in a bad spot and it's going to take away every bit of the message I'm trying to put. And, you know, you, the, the more you get out, the more you see people that are dealing with the exact same things, like you said, but looking at that from a different angle too, is that just tells you that there are a lot of people out there that don't know there are people like us, similar stories that need our stories to help them out. And, and that's, that's kind of what really pushes me to keep going is to just, just keep finding these people, keep reaching out until you, you know, you find somebody else that is like, gosh, I heard this or I saw this and, and I couldn't tell you how much that relates to where I'm at right now. And I've never really known anybody else is dealing with it. And you know, whatever the, whatever it is, it, it's just, it's awesome to me to be able to just continue to find people that are, you know, wanting to do so many good things and frustrated and, and kind of down and, you know, in a, in a low spot and finally see that, man, I can still find ways to do these things. I just got to go the right direction to do it. And, and that, that, that does a lot for me just to, you know, it makes me feel good and it makes me know that, what I'm doing is, is something good. And you know, I, I, it's, it's funny you bring that up because that's one thing that I talk about in my class and you, you're a perfect example of that because you took, you took all of that reinforcement and that empowerment that was what? Negative. And you did more, you worked harder and you fought. And we're the type of people that whether you give us positive or negative reinforcement, you find it deep within yourself to push through it. And whether you're driven by haters or whether you're driven by, again, like you're, you're in a good department, people are positive, they're reinforcing you positively, they're making you do more, they're making you work harder and you're fighting and you're, you're pushing for that progression. That's awesome because you're doing that in a good positive way and you don't have to maybe deal with that negativity. But on the same token, the fighters, the, the, the meat eaters, if you will, the grinders, those junkyard dogs on the fire ground that are going to, boss, what do you need? Okay, I'll go, you know, doing the vent. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I got another job assignment. What do you need me to do? Those guys, no matter what kind of reinforcement they're going to get, they're there for the job because they love the job and they're there to make themselves better for this craft. And it's awesome to hear somebody like yourself take this and give this asset to the fire service. Because like you said, if we can keep finding these people that are in a tough time and maybe don't get to go to those conferences or, you know, they're struggling with their identity because that's really what this is, is like, well, who am I and what kind of an asset am I to the fire service, to my department, to myself? You know, you can get put in a bad spot in a bad place. And you know what, you might turn somebody off entirely. They could go and, you know, be like, God, you know, I don't have these problems at McDonald's, man. I could be making, you know, 15 bucks an hour flipping hamburgers, but like, aren't we're, we you know for the most part we're all here for one big thing and you know that's the mission to to our civilians and to protecting lives and protecting property and we're doing it man because we love people we just we, we love going out there we love the job and you know it's it's awesome to hear that you can take where you were and just turn it around because again you're just oozing that enthusiasm and positivity back into people and got like i don't get to read much so I've got my podcast lined up. So like throwing my earbuds in and cutting grass or doing work or, you know, down at the department stuff, like, man, just that speaks to my soul because like just hearing those stories and hearing that, that that's uplifting, man, that keeps you pushing. That's just like, man, there's one more that's, that's drinking the Kool-Aid. Finally, we're back on the right track. We're doing good things. And again, we, we need more people like that. We need more people to be positive about it and just keep pushing no matter what. Yeah, no, I, like you said, I couldn't agree more. And man, that's that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Even though at times I think to myself, you know, what the heck am I doing? Because this is not. This is just very outside of my personality. You know, doing this type of stuff. But at the same time, when you 
do have a person that reaches out like that, like I said, it's just, it's like, wow, that's, that just blows me away. And it, it makes me want to keep doing more and more and more because I know there are really good people out there that need to hear it. So, and that's, you know, I was kind of thinking to my, myself before we came that I love doing this because I learn something every time I do it. It's almost a selfish thing for me because when I have, you know, these people that are, that are passionate and, and learning and, and doing great things all the time, I benefit from it a lot. And I, I hope that kind of spreads out through whoever's listening as well, but it only, it almost makes me just want to do more of them because I know there are so many people out there with great stories like yours and well, everybody else that's been on. And so it's hard for me to just kind of slowly patience. I guess it comes down to patience. Like you said, what, why do something in five years if I can do it right now? You know what I mean? So <laughs> And that's the I, toughest I'm thing. With that I, as well. I'm, I'm not patient, man. Like, boy, if I <laughs> if I see something, I want to take the bull by the horns, man. It's going to get done. And a lot of people don't like that because you know you got to go through processes and you got to go through this and do that. I, I, boy, man, if we can do it and you just want to put in some time, let's put in the time. Let's get it done. Let's let's go yeah. get it done right now. But you know that's the thing. It's that patience. Like again, for me to just sit and listen to other guys talk and and just be to that broadened idea or that more broad idea that that fire service has been here for hundreds of years. You've been a part of it for a blip. Maximize your time now. Uh, uh, 10 years, man, I've got a lot accomplished yep. at my department. I'm sharing the message. I'm doing good things. I, I, I know that people are listening. There's been people that reach out and just be like, hey, you know, thanks for the message. Thanks for this. That's 10 years. If I can, if I can harness that and accelerate that and the next 10, I can expound on what I have now. I, I, man, I, I don't even know where it would go. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're making the, making the world a better place. And that's what it's, a, it's about. That's why, you know, being here is so important and understanding your role and how important it is to leaving that legacy. It, it's not, it shouldn't be about your name in the marquee. It shouldn't be about the, the fame, the recognition. It, it's not about that. It's about what you're fostering and bringing up behind you. And it's, it's yeah. those other people, whether in, their, in different parts of the country or within your department, your department's going to be here long after you're gone. And all these other people that are growing behind you that are just starting on year one, that's the future. That's the legacy. That's the difference makers right there. And for the people that can't recognize that or they want to hold on to it tight because they are thinking about, oh, well, I'm so-and-so and I did this and I did this. I mean, man, that's not why we're here. That's not what we're doing. Like, yeah. you, you, you got you to gotta see the bigger picture with it. And you got to honestly, like, you know, that's the one thing like Aaron Field sitting in nozzle forward class. Like, once you get to paraphrase, you know, once, once you get to that point where you have that self-realization that, like, you don't matter. Like, you're, you're – you're just a guy. You're just a girl. You're just out here doing that thing. Like to have that self-realization yep. where it's just like, like I tell everybody, I'm nobody from nowhere. Like I can tell people the town I live in, I can tell them where I'm at. And they're like, Oh, Wisconsin, Madison. Yeah. I know where you're at. Like, no, no, but okay. You know, I, I, I'm from nowhere. Like I, I I'm, I, I'm just a guy, like just trying to spread my message, man. And I'm just trying to be me. And you know, some people love it. Some people hate it, but the end of the day, it's not going to deter me. It's not going to stop me. You know, I, I'm out there thinking about, man, just make the difference yep. in one person's life. Just make that difference. And somebody needs to hear this. Somebody is going through the rough time. I know where I was. Just keep pushing. Just keep going. Just keep grinding. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so I want to definitely get on to kind of a different area of, of your life because I, I don't want to forget about it. So you, you are part of uh, Midwest Fire Tactics, uh, instructor and kind of good contributor to those pages. Uh, I definitely want to get into some of that because uh, I enjoy that page a lot. I get a lot of good out of that. And so I want to give you some time to, to talk about that. And, and also, you, you guys are doing a, a quarterly challenge kind of I guess that's what I'll call it, but you can go into it further, but it's awesome to see something like that. And I definitely want to hear your kind of take on where it came from and all that, but go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about the, the Midwest fire tactics, everything. 
associated. So, you know, I'm out there just going to conferences and I'm out there just trying to meet like-minded people and I'm at a conference. It's this little conference, the Oath Keepers Fire Conference. And, you know, for those who know me from the conference as someone who's, you know, helping with it, teaching with it, I was a student. I always tell everybody I'm a student of the craft. I don't like to tell everybody like, you know, I'm an instructor or I go teach this or I go do this. Like I'm, I'm learning every single day. So I'm a student of the craft and I happened to be there and I met this guy and unbeknownst to me, uh, Nate Furton uh, lives just what, so now, okay, you have to understand if I say just down the road, that could mean <laughs> an hour, hour and a half. That's just a little <laughs> jaunt down the road. But realistically, we're in the north. I might have to drive 20 minutes just to get a candy bar. So like just down the road for us, he's, he's just down the road from me. So he's just over the border into the Upper Peninsula, career fireman. And we met at the Oath Keepers Fire Conference. And, you know, we found out like, we're the same person. Like he goes to conferences, I go to conferences. He believes in this, I believe in this. And I was like, man, you know, I like your page, Midwest Fire Tactics and Training. Nate started the company and uh, we, we hit it off. And I, I thank God every day because like I got to meet Nate and Nate got to empower me and give me my voice, give me my platform to share the message and allow me to do this stuff. And, you know, without him, I, I, I don't know where I'd be at, honestly, because I'd still probably be doing whatever I'm doing and going to conferences and stuff, but I, I wouldn't be able to share the message that I'm sharing. So, you know, yep. we met and uh, for the past couple of years, I've been helping out with the page. I've been helping out doing classes and we try to do stuff regionally. And we're very, very blessed and fortunate that we got picked up in a, in, into the Oath Keepers cadre and, you know, to share that message there and, and teach. Um, but with Midwest, you know, we, we try to grind out what we can and share that message here regionally and locally. And one of the tough things for us is that we're trying to break down that culture that we experience around us because we have so many technical colleges that rule the area and they teach all of the entry level stuff. But most of those guys just have that mindset where it's like, well, that's just the bare minimum. And that's just to get started in your career. So our goal is to try and just take them, even though they may seem like basic skills, take those basic skills that are outside of what the book teaches and it just continue to hammer on those and get better at those. And, you know, that's our goal is just taking those basics, getting really good at them, making things realistic with, you know, everyday things from the studies and from other classes. And uh, yeah. we, we've been going at it a couple of years and, you know, we um, meet up, we, we do forcible entry, you know, stuff on our own. We keep, you know, training together. We keep going to conferences together. And uh, back in 2019 in the fall, we kind of started talking about it and we were coming up with ideas like, man, you know, it's, you see all these raffles on Facebook and social media and stuff. And, you know, you know, money's going to good causes or, you know, the, these guys are just out there grinding trying to make money to, so they can buy a forcible entry door so they can teach more classes. And finally, the one thing that we came up with, like, how do we get people to train more? But like, even if they're not coming through us, we just want to see more people training. We just want to see more people getting better. So that's where we came up with our idea for the New Year's resolution training raffle. And what better way to hold people accountable to themselves than challenge them with some free prizes and just hold them accountable for a whole quarter. So, you know, like right now we're in the third quarter. So right now uh, it's all about flowing, hose packaging, uh, deployments, whatever you want to do hose related just get better pull flow do whatever you yeah. can and that's the big thing for us like you video yourself like our our biggest mission there was you get a lot of haters on facebook you get a lot of guys that sit back and armchair quarterback how people do stuff that's not what the raffle's about and that's not what we're there to do we're there to empower we're there to uplift and we're there to help so yeah. first video you may have never done the skill before. You may have done the skill a little bit before, but you don't have the technique down. So first video, raw, unedited, whether you're throwing ladders, whether you're flowing hose, or, or excuse me, stretching hose or flowing, and uh, 
uh, our other uh, quarterly raffle was masking up with gloves on. You know, that's, that's one of the big topics, especially yep. a hot topic with depending on the circles you're talking in. But yep. you know what? We had so many people like on that first quarter masking up with gloves on and starting out at like 20, 30, 40 seconds and just not understanding mechanics. So then that second video that we wanted them to launch at the back half of the quarter and submit to be entered into the contest was, where's your improvement at? How have you committed to yourself and the raffle to get better? God, you would not believe how some of these guys shaved off times. Like there were guys who were doing it in 30 seconds. And at the end of the quarter, they were doing it in 10 seconds. They were doing it in 15 seconds. Yeah. So awesome. for us, that was awesome because like, man, affecting change with so many people from all over the country and, and all over the place, like that was the whole, that was the whole point. And we don't, we're not making a single dime off of this. You know, any of the prizes that you see, uh, we have great, great partnerships with a lot of awesome companies out there um, who are donating prizes or, you know, we're going out and getting the prizes on our own and uh, yeah. donating those back to the people. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we could be taking submissions for, you know, uh, different things like that for uh, money, but, you know, that's what, that wasn't the goal. And, you know, we have had a, a ton of awesome participation. And if we continue to get that through the fourth quarter, this is something that we're definitely going to sit down and look at doing again, because if, if it's about making people better, again, like we talked about before, like, how, how are you making the people behind you, in front of you, on your side, your peers, how are you making them better? And by having everybody commit to this raffle, I mean, it's been just awesome. We've been so blessed by everybody sharing this and just wanting to get better with it. Um, we'll be launching our fourth quarter here uh, soon, but um, our fourth quarter, we'll, we'll leave that on the DL, but it's going to be a pretty, pretty awesome prize pack. And Again, we pick topics that are just basic firemanship skills, basic stuff that if you grind out, think about it, you grind out for a couple of months, one skill set, and now you go to another quarter and grind out another skill set. Heck, at the end of the year, you take all those skill sets and you put them all together. Boy, you, you've really improved yourself. And even if you can't get your crew to do it, even if you can't do, you know, get your bosses to do it, if you're doing it and people see you doing that, that's exactly what I talk about, like with the workshop and, and what we discussed already. You're bleeding that enthusiasm in everybody around you to get better. And you see other guys out there challenging other guys on their crews and challenging other people to be like, hey, man, check out this. Let's go do this. Hey, next shift, let's try to get pick this up. And if it's making people better, and at the end of the day, that's going to affect our mission and or affect the positive outcome of a patient or a victim that we have great awesome that's that's why we're here and that's why we're doing what we're doing so um that that kind of inspired it and you know for us you know we realized that this this is definitely bigger than us and this is definitely bigger than us making money i mean you know we, we've been grinding it out for a few years and getting classes here and there and we've been very blessed and we just want to share that with everybody we want everybody to get better and that's kind of where this this raffle came about and you know, I know you've got a video on the uh, uh, third quarter here, so hopefully you got yep. your second video coming up soon so that you can win a brand new 7 ace tip nozzle with an out um, shutoff. I'm literally thinking to myself that I better go put another one on after we get done because I'll probably forget <laughs> about it. So, so yes, I will but, be doing that. Yeah, no, so I mean, it, it's great. And, you know, like one thing I don't think people do enough of because, you know, they're – they're afraid of what people are going to say. People don't yes. video themselves enough. People, yes. people are not putting themselves out there. I think it's awesome when you can go on to engine company resurrection, or you can go on to truck floor training, or you can go on to any of these other great pages that we have out there. And people are videoing, videoing personal time that they've put in to what their expectation of like, man, I'm doing really good. And they go out to this sea of social media hate and just trolls that are like, why would you throw a ladder that way? How, who taught you how to do that? Why are you doing yeah. it this way? What, why aren't we collectively as a group, why aren't we, instead of putting that person down, just being like, hey, man, great job. Maybe next time, just consider this hand placement. 
Maybe next time, just consider when you pick it up off the ground or pull it off of the truck or do your search, try it this way because this is the reason I you know, do it this way and here's the pros and cons about it. And yeah. started up lifting each other versus just getting into a room and being like, oh, well, I'm so-and-so from such a department and I go on hundreds of calls a year and this is the way that we do it and your way is stupid. That's, that's the, what are you accomplishing? You're not accomplishing anything. So, you know, the more that we can do to uplift and empower each other and get those videos filmed, like even for me, you know, we have a YouTube page for anybody who is out there and, and sees us on YouTube. Uh, we do some training videos here and there, but realistically, you know, some of the videos are just us and how we do things a certain way. I've watched those videos and even made corrections on myself because um, we just had a recent switch from uh, Scott to MSA. And mm -hmm. I've never been used to a uh, chest strap ever before. So one thing that I was doing with my yeah. mask ups is I would be doing all my masks up, mask ups, and I would be watching these videos and I would be like, I can't believe it. I've been clipping my regulator hose under my chest strap this entire time. And I haven't, I haven't even <laughs> noticed. But the fact that I took the videos and started yeah. watching the videos myself, now I have a totally different method on when I get dressed and I clip that chest strap that I lean forward so that my hose falls out of the front because we have um, on all of our air packs, we have a, a little quick release. It's a snap shackle and yep. that hooks right under the corner of the mat. So it stays in front. You can deploy that and you can get a good mask up uh, right in front of you and it kind of keeps it up and away from where you're working. So, you know, for me, I, that, that was huge. I mean, that, that was a difference maker in, you know, not just my mask up times, but just self-awareness and safety for, you know, when I'm out on the fire ground and I don't have that as already a, a pre-done entanglement type of thing and when I'm crawling around. So, you know, I, I think that if we got that yeah. more and I think if people backed her down a little bit on social media, which I know that I'm a dreamer and that's never going to happen, but like yeah. if we were able to do that and you're able to find a positive page where people can uplift you and, and I mean, just God, maybe, maybe they'll tell you good job. Maybe we can actually tell each other good job. You know, that, yeah. that would be huge. Um, you, you know, I, I think that, I think that that would uh, push a lot of more people to do those videos, but you know, that's with the raffle. That's how we're holding people accountable because by putting yourself out there and we even say right in the raffle, like if you see something that somebody's doing, that's like, a blatant safety issue, or maybe they just don't know any better because they've never done it on their own before and they just want to yep. get better. You, you sh shoot them a private message, you know, say, Hey man, good job. But next time, maybe you want to think about this or next time, maybe yep. try it like this and see how it helps you. You know, like I said, I was the YouTube firefighter guy. Like I had to sit and watch videos on a lot of this stuff. And like, I would sit and watch like when I was really interested in more of the truck work side of things, like a lot of the West coast offense videos. And like, I would just sit there captivated and in awe about what these full-time guys are getting to do and what the, how they're doing a certain way, then getting to go and talk to those guys and go to these conferences and be part of the classes and everything. You know, I realized like how much more I could learn, but then I started doing it on my own and taking those videos and like some of the tips and tricks that I've gotten from it. I'm not an expert. I don't think anybody's an expert. I mean, we're all students and we're all trying to teach each other and yeah. just grow with each other. So, you know, th that's the thing, like, that's how I started. And there's some of these people who are just watching these videos for the very, very first time. And they're excited about it because they've never seen it before. But boy, you look at like that Minuteman load, or if you're a fan of the AAA, that AAA, like, God, that, that would make, that would be so much easier because we don't even have a load right now. We just jam it in the cross lay and that's just how it is. Yep. I mean, maybe, maybe yep. they could do better and they're just on their own and they're trying to pitch it to their department because, you know, they're, they're just watching and, and they're captivated by you. And that's something that people have to remember is that if you're going to put something out there and, you know, maybe you think that, oh God, I only got three likes on that video or I only got two likes on this post or this motivational thing, like that shouldn't matter. That's two people yeah. who care. That's two people you yeah. just made a difference for that day. So, you know, like for us on Midwest, every single Sunday we put up uh, like a little bit of Sunday motivation or just kind of like a little, a little talk that we, you know, just throw out for, you know, things going on, whether it be a hot topic or something happened to us in our department or things that we just want to get out there and talk about for a motivational factor or like how to keep grinding better and things like that. And man, you get 10 likes. Awesome. Hey, maybe you went viral and you got a couple thousand shares or you got a couple of thousand yep. 
uh, hits on it. Like that's even better, but man, I, I think it's more important to those true people that if you get 10, 13 likes and you know that those 10 or 13 people are there and they're, they're eating up that message and they're just, they're a part of it. You know that you're making a difference and you, and you know that, that yeah. that's a positive outcome for their day. Yeah. I, I can't say enough about that. Just the whole challenge thing and everything you've talked about, but I want to say something first before I get into that is I think one of the coolest things about it and, and you're hitting on it a lot, but you know, that's your page, you know, your the the Midwest is, is the page that you guys run. So you have the power of, of basically monitoring what's being said. So you can create a safe environment for these people that probably aren't going to post anywhere else. They're, they're not going to post on a, a, another page that they know they're going to get shredded on, but they have the confidence that, Hey, I can post on here because, you know, I, I'm seeing the conversations under other people's videos and, you know, there are people trying to help you out or people giving compliments or whatever. And I feel like I can be safely put this out there. And, and I think that just that in itself of you guys creating a safe environment for people to put their self out there, maybe, that's the very first step ever taken towards this journey that you and I are on. And so I think that is huge. Just, just that little piece right there. And, and I'm, I, you know, it, it's amazing that you said that because like, you know, one of the videos that I did on the YouTube page is like my progression through uh, mask ups, like my mask up journey. I found my very, very, very first video of me masking up with gloves on. And one of the guys that, led me and pushed me to do that on my own is Jason Fulmer from Ambassadors of the Craft. And I absolutely love that man more than I could even say because he started my journey to open up my door into myself to push myself to be better. And it's amazing because I watched that first video and it's almost cringeworthy because like I don't have the mechanics down, I don't have the technique and I'm just kind of fumbling through it and everything. But you know what? I was able to post that on his page and just be part of their contest that they had. And in my head, I thought I was doing good. And guess what? I didn't get shredded. Like it, it pushed me to start, start doing more and everything. And like, I, I thank God every day that I was uh, pointed in his direction and we, I, I found him on Facebook and I'm, I'm happy even more now that he's part of the Oath Keepers cadre. And like, I get to actually interface with this guy that single-handedly for the one skill set pushed me to be, even better every single day that I can, that I can do that. And like you said, trying to do that on our own and take, you know, what's something that he started with that mask up challenge and expand that even more. I, I mean, like you said, if it's a safe environment for people and they feel safe enough to post those videos there, then like you said, you know, and I guess I didn't even realize it until you are, you said it, like maybe that is the safe environment that people need, you know, whether it's a, uh, throwing us a, a, a private message on the page or getting involved in the training raffle, man, we're no better than anybody else. And like, you, like I said, we're students. We're, we're students. We want to learn. We want to do more. We don't have the opportunity to go to hundreds of fires a year. But man, we're out there grinding. We're out there trying to be better, just like everybody else. And everybody else needs their minute that, you know, maybe it's going to change their life forever. Maybe it's going to change their career forever. And if, if that's that safe environment, man, you know, that, that's awesome. I, I, I guess I never thought about it that way, but you know, it, it's the truth. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, I, I put up videos on other pages and like, I've had haters right away, like straight out of the gate, like, Oh my God, I can't believe that's not practical. Oh my God. Why are you doing this, this, that way? And it's like, dude, like I didn't start on the expert level skill level on the video game. I started on the beginner level where I can barely yeah. use the controller. Like, I didn't start, you know, if anybody looks at my page, like the other day, I just, I had it in my head. I like to visualize what I'm going to do for a skill. I like to think about how I'm going to do it. Uh, you know, for me, I come from a really large background in scuba diving. And like at, uh, when I was uh, like 14 years old, 13 years old, I started in the diving world and I went right into technical diving. I specialized right away and all technical diving is, is muscle memory and skill specific things. Cause when you are two, three, 400 feet under the water, if something goes bad, 
it's going to go real bad. And if you can't manage all those little problems very quickly and effectively, people are going to die, period. Yeah. That's the way it is. So the way that I look at my skill sets is that with diving, I visualize how I would take my mask off, put it back on, grab my backup mask, how I would hook something off, exchange regulators with my buddy, how we would do gas exchanges. Same concept. Like the other day, I visualized in my head off of our engine, we have a 35 and we have a 14 foot roof ladder. And I know that the 14 foot roof ladder sits beautifully into the 35. And I've gained self-confidence over the past 10 years that I can throw a 35 on my own. And that's a very proud moment for me because I can remember a point in my career that I never even thought that that would be even close to a possible thing. Like there's no way I looked at that ladder. It's a monster. It's a beast. And I've always (laughs) been told, I've always been told this whole time, you would never be able to do that on your own. You need at least two or three people and don't even think about trying to move it on your own. Well, you know what? I started off with a roof ladder. I started getting the techniques down. I went through flipping. I went through riding the beam. I went through briefcase carries, low shoulders, high shoulders. Then I moved up. We have a 28. We don't have a 24. So I moved right up to the 28. And I spent so much time getting so proficient on that and throwing it. My three-second knot on my halyard, getting really, really, really good at it. And then I finally thought to myself one day, you know, watching like an old guy, I say that with the most respect possible, <laughs> but Brian over at Seattle, like watching Brian be able to do that and, and have him by on his own admission be like, you know, I'm 50 years old and I can do this. I finally thought to myself, man, if he can do it, I can do it. And I went and I, I grabbed the 35 and it took some time. It took a comfortability level. You know, I'm very happy that our department has all of our tips, feet, and midpoints marked on our ladders so that we can go right to the, the balance point. And, you know, for the 35, again, you start looking at things a different way, when, especially when you have the self-confidence that you can do it. I never realized on our engine when our ladder rack drops down, it's at a high shoulder throw position. And all I need to do is a low squat with a straight back. People are going to tell you, oh, my God, throwing that ladder is dangerous. Can you squat? 160 pounds can you squat 150 pounds or 200 pounds because if you can and you keep your back straight and you have good lifting form and you have it on your shoulder as a balance point you can throw the 35 by yourself obviously no one should start with that as their number yep. one ladder and this is what we're going to start with And i'm not trying to tell everybody go grab a 35 and throw it start how i did i went from a roof to a 28 to the 35 and it's taken yep. me almost 10 years to get to that point with my self-confidence level. Like I haven't had the opportunity on a truck company that does stuff every day to learn that in a two, three, four year span. So I threw that. And then in the other day, you know, I was sitting and I, I see a lot of like on Instagram, I see guys who are grabbing, you know, their 24s with a roof ladder right away and they're throwing both of them. And I thought to myself, like, if I'm sitting in the engine and I'm first due, the only ladder compliment that I have is my roof ladder and my 35. And at the end of the day, getting ladders to the building, softening the building, having rescues, going to the roof, it's really advantageous of me to have to grab both of those ladders at the same time. But with staffing being what it is, maybe it's just me. Can I do it? Is it possible for me to grab both of those ladders at the same time and get them to the building? So I sat and visualized it and I said, you know, it's just a little bit wider. I could probably get my hand position a little bit. And then I finally just said, fine, I've got 20, 30 minutes drove down, went to the fire department, pulled the engine out and I did it. And for me, like that was huge self-confidence boost. Like it's one thing to be able to throw the 35 on your own. Now I also have a roof ladder with me. I'm making myself more of an asset on the fire ground and I'm getting more equipment to the fire building in less time. But sure enough, you know, I throw the post out there and there's guys right away who are just going to hate on it. And it's going to be like, well, just because you can't do it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. But like, that's not the point. Like, you know, I, I understand there's pros and cons. And I even threw the little hat, you know, uh, advisement in there. Like this might not be practical every single time, but at least yeah. now I have the self-confidence that, especially for me, I thought that I was at the top of Mount Everest with ladders. And now guess what? I just was able to break through another comfort zone and I'm still able to climb the mountain. Like, I don't think that we could ever get to the top of Mount Everest with this job because we're constantly learning. And if you're not constantly pushing yourself and getting out of your comfort zone and doing things that are going to push you in any discipline that you could think of with the job, you're just not doing it right. Because 
you got to keep climbing the mountain and you got to keep challenging yourself because man, now if it happens, if it's a difference maker on the one time where I can grab both of those ladders and get them to a building and we can get a whole cut faster so that I can make life easier for the engine crew below. Or if I can get that 35 in that roof to multiple ladders because we've got victims hanging from windows all over the place. And you know, yeah. I've now I've got two ladders so we can uh, more effectively get people down with the two ladders versus just one, you know, again, be that asset on the fire ground, but again, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. And, you know, I understand that it's, it's super intimidating because, you know, a lot of these people from small departments or who don't go to a ton of fires that don't necessarily have the technique down and whatnot, they get shredded by guys. Like, you, you look on some of those posts like, oh, my God, let's talk about search. I mean, God forbid you post a video of you're on the you know, a train on a wall with people because that's all you know or that's all you've yeah. been taught. And you don't know how to do an oriented search and you don't know how to search off of a line or search ahead of a hose line. Like, maybe you just don't know. And it's unbelievable how people get torched and they just get ripped apart on there. And instead yeah. of trying to say, hey, you know, and – I can't quote who it was, but I know that, you know, there are some instructors out there and there are some conferences out there that sometimes see this stuff and they offer these departments free classes. I think that's amazing. Like that, that's awesome. I, I, I saw that happen once. Yeah. And like I said, I, I can't remember who it was, but like you see people getting tore up and they're just getting shredded. And all of a sudden you have one person stepping up and doing the right thing. And that gives me a little bit more faith back into the fire service that there still are people out there that are concerned enough to actually reach out and just be like, Hey, we saw how you did things. And maybe that's all, you know, like, can we come and show you how to be more effective with it? Or maybe just show you some different techniques that are going to help you. And that, again, that's, that's fantastic. That's awesome. Because, yeah. you know, that's, that's why we're here. That's what we're doing. Make each other better. So, you know, like you said, and kind of going back around to this full circle, if, if the Midwest page in this raffle is a place that, you know, people think that they can do that and kind of expand on it and continue to work on themselves or work with other crew members within the department. That's awesome. Because, you know, again, like I said, it's, it's not something I thought about because, you know, I, we just thought, how do we get more people to train? But man, if it's a safe space for people to just post that up and, and just put themselves out there without being totally shot down, like we even say in the rules, if you're going to sit and bash people, we'll just delete you from the page. Like there, there's no room for that. Like we, we don't want you to do that because you're totally defeating the purpose of what everybody's trying to do for the raffle yep. and for themselves. Oh, that's awesome. And I, I literally, I can't, I can't say enough about how, how great of a, an idea that is and, and how much I truly believe that it's, it's going to be a great, great thing. I, I really hope that it's something that you guys can continue into next year and, and beyond. It's, it's incredible. I, like you said, I've I've entered a couple times. I think I might have missed one, but uh, it's just it's just awesome to have something like that out there to kind of create an environment or or an opportunity for people to get some training, to get some ideas of other people, what they're doing and, and all that that they may not have that opportunity in their of their home environment, their, their department or whatever. And it's just, it's just awesome. And I also want to say if there's anybody out there that does have the opportunity to donate some stuff for, to these guys to continue the good work, I, I want to challenge you to reach out to Mike or just to the page and, and donate something to the cause. Cause you know, they're, this is a, a great, great tool it's something that is truly benefiting the fire service. And, and if you have the opportunity to, to donate something to that, I, I know that they'd be truly grateful for that. So I want to throw that out there for sure. That's awesome. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate that because, you know, this is something we talked about for next year and trying to spice it up a little bit and, and keep the same central thesis of what we're doing, but maybe add in some, some other little challenges along the way. And uh, just kind of take what we have and make this into a progressive type of thing. So, you know, that's something that we're definitely going to be talking about. And uh, as we head down to Ohio at the end of the month, you know, we get a long, long car ride. Um, but, you know, we get a time to talk about that and expand on stuff. And if this is something that, you know, people are willing to support and we get the same type of uh, positive feedback that we did, 
uh, with, with what we've done so far this year, man, that, that would be just, it'd be awesome. It would be awesome if we can keep running it because, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to emphasize it doesn't cost you any money to invest in yourself and grab a ladder, grab your mask. Like there, there are guys and I can't believe this, but like, there are guys you talk to where it's like, man, they, they really frown upon us, you know, doing this type of training or taking this out or getting the rig out and stretching. That's fine. When you're doing your daily SCBA checks at work, guess what? You can do your mask up drills with gloves on right there. Even if you do it five, six, seven, eight times, you're making yourself better right there. And it costs nothing. And even, you know, consider that a life hack, if you will, to kind of get around how you're doing it because you know, if they're not going to let you pull the engine out and, and stretch, if they're not going to let you take the truck out and do first do inspections and, and know your district and uh, they're not going to let you pull ladders off because you're such a busy department, you got to figure out those life hacks because if you're continually getting better every single day, that's what the raffle's about. And that's why, again, our entry level is zero dollar, our, our entry fee is zero dollars for that reason. Like it, it shouldn't cost you anything to invest in yourself and be better. It, it just, it, it, it's not. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell us what you got, what do you have coming up in the future? You got classes or you said you're going to a high, what, just a little bit of where we can find you and what you got going sure. on. So uh, anybody that's going to be at the uh, Oath Keepers uh, Fire Conference uh, coming up here at the end of the month, uh, Midwest Fire Taxes will be down there with just an amazing cadre of guys that are just uh, all about the cause. They're all about making people better and fostering an environment where we're actually doing solid skill sets, basic firemanship stuff, and have an awesome group of guys in cadre from around the country that are um, just going to be putting in the time. The great thing about the Oath Keepers Fire Conference, none of us make a single dime on that conference. So we have money that gets donated back to Sons of the Flag um, that's, you know, been really made large by, uh, uh the Portland firemanship, firemanship conference, um, awesome organization for, uh, burn survivors and that support system there. Um, and, uh, the other part of it where we donate money back to is, uh, the Jamie Dick- Dickman scholarship fund. Jamie Dickman was a line of duty death in Ohio, and, uh, they have a scholarship fund that we also donate to. So, um, after all the expenses are paid and everything, instructors make zero dollars. So, we're invested in making people better. That's the, that's our investment to you. And uh, with what they've been able to do down there and just the positive uh, brotherhood, if you will, that's down there. You know, that's, that's for me, that's a shot of motivation in the arm to, to get down there with those guys and all the students that come because, I mean, we have so many repeat students. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Like we see some of the same people every year. So we'll be down there for that. Uh, uh, stay tuned to our uh, Facebook page, Instagram page. Um, with COVID, it kind of got weird for, you know, doing in-person classes again, but we're going to be uh, firing up again. Um, a little further out, uh, we're working on trying to build something up in the northern Wisconsin area, so uh, keep an eye out for that, and uh, we're going to be doing some very unique things with that. Um, remember, it's usually cold here nine months of the year. So we do crazy things like we drill holes in the ice and pump water out of the ice to the engine. That's just how we have to do it. So we make our own hydrants, but um, keep an eye on that. Um, Anybody who's interested like Midwest wise, because we can travel, we have the equipment to do it. Um, uh, I'm a certified uh, surface ice rescue uh, instructor. So uh, as we start thinking about these colder temperatures and whatnot, we delve into that and we're, we do NFPA classes for uh, surface ice rescue. Um, so we can go right through the departments and specific to their district. Once we start getting some uh, first ice here, we can get out and start teaching that again. So we do that, uh, the awareness through the technician level. And then uh, we also have our forcible entry class and some of our other disciplines that we do. So we're gonna be uh, firing those back up for fall and winter. Um, a lot of, especially up here, uh, a lot of great options for inside training because, you know, sometimes it's not super conducive to be training outside when it's 40 below zero. That's great. Definitely. It's, it's nice to hear, you know, different regions of, of the nation. You got your own little, little areas. Of course, that's a long, long way away from me, but you know, <laughs> you're a couple hours, three hours, you know, whatever away 
you, you have those options and, and you don't have to go all the way to Florida or New York or California to, to get some good training. So that's, it's great that you're kind of providing that for your, your area up there. That's, that's great. Yeah. And we're not, we're not looking to make a million dollars. I mean, we're not looking to retire, you know, on yachts or anything like that, you know, so we try to make our training as affordable as feasibly possible. Um, we've actually, uh, Nate's done most of the work on it and, uh, we, we have a, a training trailer that we now have that we can tow. Um, we've got our own forcible entry door that we actually made. So um, we can come to you. Uh, we can do forcible entry training. We uh, have a variety of different uh, hose complements and nozzle complements that we can work on, some different engine stuff with you. And a lot of our foundational skill sets that we teach are, are you know, truckless truck. You know, just because you don't have a truck you're still going to have to search. You're still going to have to potentially vent. You're still going to have to do a lot of those basic fire ground techniques. So we try to focus on those individual skill sets and really put the time into it because uh, the investment in time and the reps and quality repetitions versus PowerPoints, that's where you're going to be making the difference. And that's what we try to focus on. So just no BS training, yep. basic firemanship skills, and just getting better through repetitions and muscle memory. So you know, for anybody interested in that, you can hit the page up. Otherwise, just keep an eye on everything. And uh, we'll be launching some stuff here as we go. And like I said, if you're going to be looking uh, for uh, next spring, we uh, are going to be coming out with something, hopefully, once we develop a couple of uh, uh, strategic partnerships and uh, have our venues all squared away. And we're going to be a little bit selfish when we're not going to be doing, you know, anything like high rise uh, or anything crazy like that. We're going to be doing something very specific for uh, the geography of the Midwest and kind of regionally what we're doing. So keep an eye out for that because we're pretty excited about it. We'll be launching that hopefully within the next couple of months here. That's great. Good, good stuff. So do you have a, do you have an email, direct message? How, how do you want people to get a hold of you? Uh, best way to get a hold of us is uh, to go straight through the Midwest Fire Tactics and Training page. You, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, feel free to add me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, you know, I, if you got questions, if you, uh, you know, need to talk about stuff, feel free to reach out. I'm trying to make myself as available as possible. And I try to answer everybody that, you know, hits me up, uh, it, anything that you want. If you want to talk more about, uh, the Inglorious Bastards, uh, class or workshop, um, you know, I'm going to be getting out there more and doing more with that. Um, and, uh, if you're interested in that, or if you're interested in anything through the Midwest page, please feel free to hit us up and don't forget Midwest fourth quarter is coming up for our, uh, uh, new year's resolution raffle. So everybody keep a post on that. We'll go ahead and do a video. And, uh, once we get that video filmed and dropped, we will be, go ahead and, uh, launching that raffle as well. We have a really, really awesome prize pack for fourth quarter, and that's going to kind of be our culmination of the year. So if you guys support that and you like free raffles, free stuff, and down and dirty training, and that's your sweat equity into that, keep supporting that because then we're going to try to run that again next year. And, and we're blessed that everybody so far, we can't thank you enough for the support on the page and, you know, having me on the podcast today. This has just been awesome. Like I said, I'm a fanboy. So uh, to be on here and talking, uh, I, this was awesome. And I, I thank you a lot. Um, but you know what, if you're, uh, if you guys are going to uh, be out there and doing more, you, you know, we're, we're all there to get better. We're going to, you know, Try to be as uh, open as we can. Try to help you as much as we can. And fortunately for us, if we don't know the answer to your question or we don't have a direct answer or you're in a crazy different part of the country, we're a super network with a lot of really, really, really awesome people. So we can get you hooked up. So um, you just hit us up and, you know, whatever we, we can do to help, we definitely will. Sounds good, man. I have thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Look, really got a lot out of it. Like I said, I always learn a ton from from all these great people that I have on, and I definitely add you to that. I definitely enjoyed the conversation and learning more about you and, and what you stand for. It's, it's it's been a good time. So I, I thank you for your time, and and hope there's a lot of people out there that that get a lot from it as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, I had a blast. This was awesome. Good deal. Well, everybody out there, thank you once again for spending some time with us. Hope you got some good
good information, some some things to think about, and and wherever you can go from here, definitely look these guys up. They're doing great things. Involve yourself in their their challenge and and make yourself better. Until next time, I'm say to please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and be safe. Thank you.